Start by uh, working on our layout. There are two distinct approaches that we can take to designing our castle, laying out our, our castle design. The most important thing is that we want to build our object around the origin here. We want to build our object around uh, the origin. And with that in mind, we also want to use our solids menu. We can use our solids menu to create our castles using, a, using our solid primitives as the basis for our objects. The other approach that we can take is to use curves to create the plan view and then to extrude our solids in that manner. Okay. So I'm going to do a quick design uh, showing you how to do it using your solids. But I think a more efficient way to go about the project is to actually use your curves and generate your models uh, from your curves because it gives you just so many more options. Okay, So let's start out by, we'll, we'll create the center of our, our um, spaceship or space station. Uh, using a cylinder, okay? So we'll come over here to our cylinder tool right here, and we're going to type in zero to make the base of our cylinder start at the origin, okay? And just intuitively, we're going to just drag this out like so. And now we're going to come over here and just drag it out. We don't want to make it really thick. We just want to have maybe just go one unit like that. And it looks like that, okay? Now, I want you to click on your object, that object that you just created, okay, by left-click, left-clicking on it to select it, okay? And I want you to come over here and look at its object properties, okay? Uh, mine is a closed poly surface. Mine is what it should be. What's, does anybody have an object that's of type extrusion? Anybody have an object that's of type extrusion? Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Listen to me. Keyshot does not see extrusion objects. Keyshot does not see extrusion objects. Okay? One of the things that you should do when you start a Rhino session, especially when you know that you're going to be employing and using a lot of extrusions in your design, is that the first, one of the first things you should do is to come up here to the command line and type in the command use extrusions. And if you type in USE, it'll almost bring it up right off the bat in the command line. Use extrusions. And it says planar extrusion object type. You want to change that to polysurface. Keyshot does not see extrusion objects. So if you have a model that is composed, that employs, that uses objects of extrusion type, Key shot will not see it. Now, once you do that, uh, from now on, whenever you create an extruded object, there will be a poly surface which key shot can see. Now, if you've created, already created an extrusion object, one of the things that you might want to do is to change it back into a poly surface. Okay? And the way that you do that, the way that you do that is you select the object, you come over here, and you hit the explode key. Explode. Okay. Now that changes it into a group of poly surfaces. You notice that you have that cross hatch in the middle of it. Okay. That means that it's a poly surface. Once you've done that, right next door you have those puzzle pieces right there. That's your join command. Or you'll have to select your object again and then join it together. And now when you look at your object in your properties window, it'll be a it'll be a closed poly surface. Okay, click on it and look at your object properties. It should be a closed poly surface. If you click on it, is, is everybody with me there? Okay, that key shot can see. Key shot, I repeat, key shot does not see extrusion objects. That's why on the announcements page, one of the things that I have you do is to I have that use extrusions command written there so that it's a reminder to do that. 
Okay? So now we have our base, the base of our uh, space station. Okay? Now I want to uh, put like a satellite wall around it. And I'm going to use, I could either use my um, uh, tube to do that or I could use my torus. Let's use the torus. That's cooler. Okay? And I'm going to make the center of my torus at, at the origin by typing zero. And I'm going to bring this out there so that it's bigger than my base. And I'm going to pull it out like that. Okay? And so I have something that looks like that. Do you follow? Okay. Now, I have my, um, I have my uh, toroid shape. And I think I'm going to use this to make like a, uh, like, make like a cage that goes around my um, satellite. And the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to use my rotations to do that. I'm going to do a rotate with a copy, a rotate with a copy, okay? So I'm going to select that object, and I'm going to type in ROT to bring up my rotate command. The center of the rotation is where you want it to rotate from. I want it to, I want it to rotate from the center. I also want to turn copy up here in the command line where it says copy no. I want to turn that to copy yes. So I want to make a copy. The center of my rotation, I want it to be at zero. Okay? I'm going to come down here to the bottom, and I'm going to turn my ortho snap on. Okay? And I'm going to drag this out straight in my right window like this, a straight line in my right window like this, and then I'm going to rotate it vertically like that. And then I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to, maybe I should go at, um, you rotate it like this. That's good. Uh, and I'm going to go halfway like that. And halfway like that. So I have, now have something like this. Yes? Okay, let me repeat that. And while I'm doing this, I want to come up here into my options, okay, and I want to look at my units, okay, that's good, let me go to my grid, and I want to, um, that looks good, uh, let me go over here into my um, units, inches, display units. Let me go to my modeling aids. My snap radius right now is 15. Uh, my ortho snap is set at 30 degrees right here. And my grid snap, if I go to my modeling aids, I want to change that to 45. Okay. So, I've got, I select my torus, like so, right? And then I'm going to type in rotate. The center of the rotation I'm going to put at zero by hitting zero on my keypad or on my, uh, on my, that snaps it to zero. With my ortho snap turned on, I can come down here in the right window and just drag this out like so, right? The ortho snap is a, one of your, uh, one of your um, object snaps that keeps your lines moving perpendicular to where they're from or at a specific angle, okay? So I use the fact that it can move perpendicular to drag my axis out here like that to create my uh, reference point. And then I come over here, oops, let me do it here again, zero. Move it out here to drag it out there and then I use it here to snap it at 45 degrees, okay? So I'm gonna go one, two, three. And here you notice how I've created like my little, um, and I can right click to hit enter. Right clicking is the same as hitting enter. And I've got like this cage right here around m the base of my starship. Yes. Excuse, okay. One second. You go over here. You go into your modeling aids right here. And it says grid snap. Ortho snap every 45 degrees. Okay. 
Now, layer management is very important. Layer management is very important in to computer modeling, okay? So I want to have all of these hoops on the same layer, okay? And the way that I can do that is I can come over here and left-right select. You notice that left-right is everything that it touches, right? Right-left is everything that it surrounds. You follow? Left-right, everything that it touches. I'm, I'm sorry, right, left, <laughs> right, left is everything that it touches. I was just checking to see if you were paying attention, and you weren't. Okay. And left, right is everything that it surrounds. Do you follow? Selections. Right, left, if you drag your cursor right, left, it's everything that it touches. Huh? Okay, I have these circles right here, and this circle's in the center, right? If I select, use my selection rectangle, right to left, it's everything that it touches. Or, like that, everything that it touches, okay? If I go left to right, it's everything that it surrounds. I'm not surrounding anything, okay? Here, I, if I just want that... I can surround that, but I'm not surrounding anything else. It selects that. Do you follow? You follow now? You get it? Yes, no, maybe so? Okay. Options, modeling aids, grid snap, ortho snap every 45 degrees. Okay. So. Now I want to organize my layers, okay? So I'm going to select those, and I'm going to move these down to this layer right here, and I'm going to right-click and do Change Object Layer, and you'll note that those all change to red, and I should be in ghosted mode so that I have something that looks like that. Okay. Okay, so those are on that layer, and I'm going to call this layer struts. Okay. Now, I'm going to move this one right here down to this layer, because that's a special one. That one's the one that's uh, on the same plane as my um, curve, and I'm going to use that to add a detail to my, to my model. Okay. Now, you'll note here how um, this is sitting on the layer there. They're not really centered, right? So I'm going to take this one right here with my ortho snap turned on. I'm going to move this up to the center so that those are now centered on one another. And that's something that you should always know that whenever you create a surface, it creates this uh, cross mark in it. One line that goes through the center horizontally, the other one that goes vertically. And you can use that as an alignment tool to align things. Okay? So now they're both centered. Okay? So what I want to do now, in the front window, I'm going to use a cylinder. And I'm going to create a cylinder. Let me turn off these snaps here. That's... Not quite as wide as my base. Okay, so you see how it sits in there? And I'm going to move that in right here like that. Okay, and you notice that that is off a little bit. And I'm going to move this over so that it aligns there like so. Okay? And, and so that's attached there like that. And what I want to do, I want to sort of create a ring around there. Okay? Huh? Okay. Let's uh, make sure that you're in either wireframe or ghosted mode. And I'll do it again.
I'm going to grab my cylinder tool. I'm going to come here. And I can actually type in zero. So I really don't want to, don't want to do it in this window right here. I don't want to do that that way. It's not going to give me the result I want. I want to use my near snap. And I want to build a cylinder that is around this point so that it's in the center of that object right there. And so I come over here in this window, and you notice how my cursor is snapped to the edge here? You see that? Because I have that near snap on. That's the edge that it's nearest to. These are your modeling aids, your object snaps, and you've got to learn to use these. That's the secret to power modeling in Rhino. I want the diameter of, this, of the cylinder to be less than the width of this object because it's going to fit in there. And so I use that, and I can zoom in, and I use that to just eyeball it, and it's like that. And then I come into my top window and I drag it so that it inter intersects that object, like so. And so I get something that looks like that, and like that, okay? Now, I want to rotate this cylinder around this object, okay? One way I could do it, right, uh, one way I could do it, I could select that, do a rotate, put the center of my rotation at zero, click there, go down here, and then I could just begin to copy it around. like that using my ortho snap, right? But that only lets me do it at 45 degree increments, right? And I could do something like that. What if I wanted to have 10 of those around there? Let me show you a nice little trick, and you'll love this, okay? There's a command called polar array that does all the heavy lifting for you, okay? So in this case, I'm going to select this object like that, and I'm going to type in array polar. The center of the array is going to be zero. The number of items, let's change it to uh, nine. I always like to model in no odd numbers. And the angle to fill is 360. Okay. And so now, it should show me. Hit enter and I can actually see what it looks like. You see that? See how it does that? Pretty cool, huh? It's evenly huh? Evenly distributed. It's evenly distributed. Okay, so, so do you understand like the concept behind that? How it took that one element and then rotated it and evenly distributed it to create, uh, to create that around that central axis. And we're going to use this uh, to build a lot of the details for our model. We can come back, take a look at this, and see how that works. And that's, eh, 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 it's okay. Okay, and we're going to use this to build more details for this model. Okay. Okay. Does everybody follow me so far? Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to use that to uh, add an even um, greater detail to my model. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to really make that polar array uh, work, work for me. It's going to work like a soldier for me. Okay? And I'm going to hit escape. Sometimes you can hit escape to get out of a command. Okay, so I'm back to square one here. And I'm going to turn this off. I've sort of decided in looking at this that I actually want to scale this out beyond this element here, okay? And I'm going to do a special type of scale. It's called a scale one dimension, okay? So if I come over here to my scale tool and I do a scale one dimension, the origin point I can put here and I come down here like this, 
and I'm going to drag this out further so it only scales it in that dimension, like, like so. So what that's done is that's dragged it out beyond that object. And it's kind of important because I want to, um, I want to uh, keep it straight um, and not have it turn into an ovoid. Okay, now I'm going to add some details to this. So I want to come back here and look at this for a second. Okay, and I'm going to polar array around this. Okay, but I want to add some details to this element because I'm going to, I'm going to polar array to that. Okay, and one of the detailed elements that I'm going to add on the end, I'm going to put a sphere. So I'm going to come over here to this object right here, and actually I can use my near, near snap or turn that off and I'll actually use my center snap and it snaps it to the center of that end right there and I'm gonna put a sphere on there like that okay so now that's got a sphere attached to it I could have also come over here and done the same thing okay and to that sphere I'm gonna add another cylinder onto that sphere, like this, make that a little wider. And I'm going to come up, this is one of the things I love about Rhino, is that you can model in two windows simultaneously. Let me do this again, because this is like one of the coolest aspects of the program. Okay, and it's like one of the really wonderful parts of the user interface. Okay, so here I want to make a cylinder on top of this, uh, on top of this sphere, right? So, I can come over here, get my cylinder tool, and use the center, center snap it there, right? Come over here, drag it out in this window, my top window, right? So I can set the width using my sphere as a reference, right? And then once I've done that, I can come over to my right window and drag out the height. That is cool. That's what cool is in modeling. Come on, that is like... That is super cool. Now check that out, right? So we got that, right? And if we wanted to, we could now come over here and get a cone if we wanted to. And we could put that cone right there, snap it to the center, drag that out just a little bit like that, and put a cone on top of that like that, OK? So we sort of created this whole element right here. Now there are several ways that we, if we wanted to make this all one element together, we could select it all like that, right left, right, and there's this cool command called Boolean Union. And that makes that all one element and inherently solid. Okay? Boolean Union. Boolean Union. Boolean union, okay? Oh, I want to add a little bit more detail to that, okay? I'm going to add a cylinder to the, I'm going to add another cylinder to the top of that, okay? So I'm going to come over here. Uh, let me turn on my end snap because I want to get that point right at the top. And I'm going to drag that out like so. Drag that up like that. Bring that down just a little bit so that it, oops. Let me turn off some of these snaps. Sometimes you have to turn those off. Now I can ortho move this so that that's in the center there. And I'm going to take that and take that. And I'm going to, you can always come up to the command line, find the command, and execute it again. And I've unioned all of that together so that this is all one element now. That's cool, right? Uh, one more detail. One more detail because I'm going to use this to make a railing. I'm going to use this to make a railing. You're going to, you're going to love this. Okay. Uh, I want to add a truncated cone here. And I'm going to turn on my center snap. Snap there, that like that. Radius at the base. Uh, let me see what I want this to look, at, look like here. 
radius at the base is going to be, it's not going to be as wide as my cylinder. Let me turn off the center snap so it stops acting crazy. And you can do that in the middle of a command, which is another cool thing about the Rhino. Okay. Uh, we'll do like that. End of truncated cone, we'll bring that out here, and then add a little base there like that. And so we got something that looks like that, right, as an element. And this feels like it needs another ball in there, don't you think? It needs something round up in there, right? Uh, don't you think? Or is that, yeah, we'll, we'll rock that. Uh, and now I want to add that to the mix right there, so I'll grab that and Boolean union that together. Okay. I'm going to stop this right here, and we're going to pick up. Uh, we're going to pick this up in a second.